Hello, and welcome to the Psychic Stories podcast, encouraging conversations about mental health. Today I'm speaking to Reese Jones. Reese combines art, psychology, and strategy to help people think creatively and challenge convention. He works across sectors, including community sport, social activism, entertainment, and governance. Reese, welcome. Hello, Matthew. How are you? Very well. How are you doing? <laughs> this is very, very formal. Oh, it's great. Yeah, it's, it's good to be here. Thank you for having me on your podcast. You're very welcome. And as a disclaimer, Reese and I know each other very, very well through some of the lightest days and some of the darkest days. Um, so in terms of hopefully this will be quite an informal conversation. I hope so. Yes. <laughs> So in terms of the goals, what we're trying to achieve on this on this chat is to have an open and honest conversation about your mental health journey, to get some insight into the tools and techniques that have helped you and are available and, and are accessible to other people. And by discussing your journey, we hope to share and normalise conversations about mental health, as often people are not alone in these experiences. So, Mr. Reese jones over to you. Tell us about your mental health journey. Okay. Uh... Here we go. You've got me on the couch now. Um, so, yeah, I, I think uh, my mental health journey is, I think, uh, uh, growing up, uh, I've, I've always had some, I didn't realise it at the time, but um, um, I always had some kind of um, mental health issues. Um, I only realised at a later date, really. Um, after kind of going over it in my brain afterwards but I guess the first time it kind of uh, came to light really and I realized it was a, it was an issue I just thought it was normal um, not just being being normal being human um, having having big big lows um, extreme tiredness etc um, and just battling through it um, so the first time I guess it really re it, it, it came to light was when I was uh, in Australia, um, and I was uh, I was having a great time out there. I was studying uh, chemistry uh, abroad. And uh, well, just so, just to set the frame, well, when was this? Was this at school, university, onwards? Uh, so this was yes, this was university. So mm -hmm. okay. uh, this was approximately oh, 12, fifteen years ago now. So, so how old were you? About nineteen, twenty. I was twenty. Yeah, 20 so I was 20 at the time. Um, and uh yeah i was i was uh i was, I was, I was enjoying it um, but I, and i met this uh, met this girl over there and um I, at, the, at the time it was living with her in sydney and um it, she she began to see these patterns that were happening in, in my life you know uh so i you know some some bad lows uh, lots of lots of sleeping that's that's uh um, one of my <laughs> it's almost like my character traits there which is great that's fine you're you can, very well rested i am very well rested as you know <laughs> um, and uh yeah bas basically uh, uh she, she then uh got me to see a doctor about it and then and then that's when it kind of came to light um and um which which was uh which was good then i was put on medication then um it, then i came came back to the uk and there, there was some uh, interesting. So there was there was a lot of uh, st st stigma around mental health. I suppose it still is, but this was kind of fifteen years ago. So going back to uh, uh, the UK, and I remember um, my father and my uh, and my family not really being very uh, supportive about you know me being on these uh, tablets, saying everything's okay. Uh, I remember at the time going to see a doctor actually yeah, um, and him saying you don't need them chin up <laughs> everything's going to be okay and that was your GP that was uh, that was a GP I, I don't have frequent you know GP yeah. uh, a regular one I go to that was just one I just saw so that was my GP so I, I guess you know no, I, no one's perfect and obviously you know I thought thoughts have changed so that was a that was quite interesting but there was there was some so back and forth on and off the tablets and if anyone goes on the tablets you know you've got to be prepared to stick to stick with it so for instance you know there were bits where because i wasn't actively it's my own responsibility but I, you know i was told you know you don't need to be on them 
there were periods where um, at Christmas we used to have big fights because I wouldn't have tablets for days and then I'd end up almost like a, a, a junkie. Um, and then I'd be really irrational. And, and uh, so and I, uh, and I remember the pressure on your relationships, right? Yeah, you know, massively. It, it makes it worse. And, uh, and then people don't understand. So there, there was a big thing around education, I guess, and, and awareness of it. So anyway, um, I think, um, so I, 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 anyway, I came off the tablets then, um, and I guess I'll skip to the, the interesting bit, skip to the chase or whatever in the story. So um, I, I was working a lot of jobs, doing lots of qualifications. At one time, I think I was doing about six jobs um, just because I like to keep my brain active. And I think that's really, still really think that's really important. But, um, and it, it just, it's wore me, it wore me down so much. I was drinking. Oh, I was drinking full drinking alcohol, but then in the mornings having to um, drink a can or two of energy drinks um, to kind of get wake myself up, and it just got progressively worse mm. to the point where my colleagues at the time were um, looking at me and and saying, "Is everything okay? Everything?" I was like, "Yes, everything's okay." Did you and feel it, that everything was okay at the time? I didn't. I didn't recognise it as such at the time because it's I, I think I think with depression oh, it's so horrible it's 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 the eye of the beholder you can only see through the lens that you're given so at the time you don't kind of recognize it and 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 um, you know I, I, was, I was pushing pushing myself probably too hard so um and and, and just you, you mentioned that word in terms of you know being depressed is that something that's been formally recognized for you yeah yes it has um it, it had initially kind of been in the original uh, australia uh, doctors but it, it was never really acted upon there it was kind of like his and tablets off you go and there were no uh tools or anything else around that which uh now i see oh that now, now is it is invaluable um i think the tablets are, are just a crutch uh, that's the way i like to look at it it's like if you break your leg and um, you need some help getting around yeah. but that's not going to help you if you go out back out and play football yeah. <laughs> you know and, 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 and do the things that you love to do uh, yeah exactly um so yeah can you can, can we just go back a bit and just put it into like context so now you recognize how you're feeling, how you act, but then as you were growing up, like what, you know, can you see perhaps not necessarily what led to these feelings or, 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 or how you struggled, but were there elements as, as you grew up, maybe at school, uh, where you felt like that or at university where you felt that, you know, those, 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 those events perhaps were, were, were probably more serious than you were maybe first thought about. um yeah i guess i, I think it, it i think you know in i i i, I really think it kind of i i can't i i you know I, I do think back through like university and that there were interesting times and um and that's why you know we started the band and um and and kind of having that creative output really helped but uh, what, i guess what, why were they interesting why was it difficult why did you do that uh just because i needed some kind of way to express myself i guess um i think that was quite important i i also feel that you know uh like a lot of of people have gone through the education system at the moment it almost feels like a, a treadmill um and you know our, and this is you know it's, it's not my, our, my parents or my parents uh, gen generation's fault but it, it almost feels like get out there get an education jump on the treadmill of, of life um and then just start earning money and settle down and, and everything and i don't think that really suits me um mm -hmm. I, I'm, not, I'm not i'm not one to uh, to do that um it's definitely helped. It's definitely helped with my job. You know, uh, I think the, the fact going to university, meeting learned and wonderful people like yourself, and broaden my 
uh, life, etc. But it, I, I, you know, I think I think it's not really. I, I was pushed down potentially a path that, and intentionally that path I didn't really want to take. Um, and I guess I've been kind of trying to shape that um, mm -hmm. ever since. So, and and would you say that that considering yourself down that path that that amplified some of the feelings that you are having and so in some respect you know we've talked we've talked on several several of these podcasts around designing your life in a way that you want it and at the time you were going down a path that you weren't happy with and do you, do you, do you get a sense of that amplified some of the feelings that you were probably having yeah I, I think so I think that's it I think it's I think when I was at my period um, and that was uh, six years ago, five, six years ago, um, prior to the, the incident, I, I think um, that's where it felt. The, the best way I can describe it to someone is literally being at the back of a cinema in the dark, looking at the screen, but the screen is your life going in front of you. Mm. And it was just literally passing by me. And then the only periods that then, looking back at it, that I had that kind of uh, snap me back to my creative outputs and things like that. So, um, yeah, so that, that kind of, I guess, was that was a, a really dark period. And then um, and then also I went, went quite numb as well in emotionally. Um, and and uh, so then you, you seek then... Uh, some any stimulus to, to to make you feel you know something which uh you know and sadly comes in normally comes in the form um so th things like you know, start to just to feel something and then i suppose that led on then to um trying to cut myself then um to try and just literally just try and feel something to try and feel alive by harming you know, myself mm. um and that and that and that so yeah i think i think that's kind of uh sorry and that period was mm. obviously a very very difficult time for you 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 know almost you almost you mentioned it quite casually like you know i i, I ended up cutting myself and you know that is you know you know to, to a lot of people that might sound like quite shocking um but how did you feel at the time in terms of in terms of you know you know being able to talk about it so openly so that's a very brave thing to do well, a lot of I, I i don't mind I, this is the thing i don't maybe it's my mindset maybe it's because i've got good friends around uh, like yourself that i can talk about it relatively open mm. um but I, I i i've never really seen it as a it's, it's just kind of no, not part of who I am, but, but part of where the situation has led me. Um, I've yeah, I've never seen it as that. I mean, we we talked about it quite a lot uh, in our as yeah for all those listeners out there. There was uh, we were in a band, and you know, obviously that's a great way of uh, anyone who's been in a band. There's this incredible emotional connection between uh, participants in there. We we just we used to talk about death a lot. I remember, I remember, uh, I remember you just calling me up and just going up. So, uh, how are you doing today? I was like, oh, not too bad. Thank you, Matthew. I see you're not dead yet. No, um, but thank you for asking. <laughs> um, and, uh, uh, but there was a whole, uh, yeah, there was a whole fun around, you know, the age of rock and roll death, you know, 27, where we say, oh, are we going to make it? We celebrate our 27th birthdays. <laughs> I've had a very uh, just. I probably should go into the actual incident itself, and I think I'll mm. explain. Yeah, but please. Uh, so um, I, I guess it, it just kind of got to a point where, as I said, I was doing six jobs at once. Um, it was a lot of pressure on myself. I was putting loads of pressure on myself to to succeed in the qualification I was doing, which, in all honesty, I just didn't have the skills to do, uh, or didn't you know? I, I was I was trying my hardest, and in, in the, in the course tutor afterwards actually said, you know, you are the most improved um, candidate by far, and that's all I guess anyone can ask for. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I just didn't have the skills, uh, the aptitude, everything for to do it, and 
and then basically it just all came to a head so um i remember the conversation i had pre prior to it where i was in my parents house and um it was just kind of, I, it, there was no malice in it at all but my dad said uh, i remember being in my bedroom and my dad saying oh well um and i, I think that was just the straw that broke the camel's back and then i just had to leave uh, and i jumped in my car i remember driving uh past the cenotaph in newport i remember thinking this is the last time i'm gonna see this and uh, that was quite sad mm. and driving up to my house locking myself in in my room uh drinking uh whiskey i think it was at the time and then just uh, getting a sort of serrated and always serrated knife and just using that uh on my on my skin and then from there on in then my i didn't i didn't there was obviously marks there and and bleeding but mm. my parents found me then later that day this is the end in the morning <laughs> oh, mm. and then took me uh, took me straight down to uh st caddox in newport which is the uh mental health unit mm -hmm. so uh so yeah that that kind of happened and, and from there on in it was a rocky road out of it that took time but yeah that's but you know i don't mind talking about it because mm. i think no, it's. I think other people find it really shocking. I, I, I just think it's for me. It's, it was just, it was a part of my life. And if you want to know about it, great. I'm not going to. Yeah. Jump, you know. But, but, and also that you said of that instance. I mean, I can't imagine what you were feeling at that time. But you said that your parents necessarily, prior to you coming back from Australia, hadn't really taken it seriously. I assume that they now took it very seriously. They, they did from that that point onwards then and, and it's it's like anything it's just education around it they um that what well, they, they they just unaware um that's the first thing so first of all they were unaware so they couldn't support it you know and so how can you support something when you're not aware of it and the second thing i think that you know there was a, a generational thing where it's you know kind of you just get on with things you know etc and that that attitude was so i think a combination of that but then since that, then they've been really supportive. Um, it has taken a while for them to understand it because I think depression is someone who's not experiencing it is really abstract. It's, it's so difficult to explain to someone. Mm. It's not, you just can't, uh, you can't, you can't explain it. It's trying to explain the color red, you know, how do you explain the color red? To someone? Um, and very, I think that's a very good analogy. That's the way I look at it. Um, uh, so you know you can use things like you know, being at being at the back of the cinema, uh, just being a void mm. of any uh, emotion. I think uh, is I think Stephen Fry. I, I got a quote from Stephen Fry. I think depression is um, not the opposite of happiness; it's the opposite of vitality. No, I think that's that's the kind of way I, I look at it. It's you know it's um it's really difficult to describe. There's some days where you know I'm not happy, and there's some days where I'm just just depressed, you know, devoid of any. It's it's weird. It's it's tough to you know. Mm. Is it, you say everyone has their bad days. Yes, yes, everyone does have their bad days. You know, etc. But depression and days just completely wipe things out. So. Mm and and you were and at the, at the time so coming up from i you know you know my assumption is that that's possibly one of the lowest points in your life to date and how did you how did you climb out of that kind of deep dark well well that to be honest whilst there it was it was a very low well i'll be i'll be honest matthew it was it was you know there to, to me in my head it was there in, in but I, I didn't really actually i didn't realize how at the time i didn't realize how low it was mm. but then you know the exciting part happened you know which is almost like the rebirth you know uh but it wasn't exciting at the time i can tell you um my girlfriend at the time was extremely supportive and mm. i guess it was it's and to anyone who's out there experiencing it i don't want to be like the, the preacher or anything like that around it but it takes oh my word it takes time because as i said it, it's um 
uh, I think it's just a step by step period and it just is changing your mindset and it's making small habits. Um, but it was, it was, it was fascinating. So at the time there, I remember, I remember literally, I was just so drained. So I started doing um, magic tricks at that time. Mm-hmm. Because it was great because it, it got my hands doing something. Okay. Yeah. So now, so a small tasks. Yeah. Small tasks. And I put on a show for you and your wife. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. And, 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 you know, it's a good response. And, and you know, I ended up doing some shows around Newport as well. Um, but s- small tasks then to, to kind of get me through to take my mind off things. So that that's worth. So when, even now when I'm feeling down, I get a pack of cards out and just start doing some, something like that. Um, and then, you know, exercise, um, is a key thing um, and, and and kind of it, then it was just a, a trial and error uh, system so i basically experimented on myself for a bit um i also then as you as you mentioned in your introduction you know i looked into the i suppose like a scientist would looked into researching what was going on upstairs here mm. um, and actually seeing why some of these what are the mechanics of the brain why it's all all working like that to try, help me try and understand what was going on and um, that really helped as well mm. so um yeah uh i appreciate that you know, and this over time it's got better and better like i also exp- um was very fortunate then to um uh, meet go on psychologists um and doctors there um that you know through talking therapy mm um cbd uh has really you know really helped me lots um so it's 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 just that process of just talking through things and realizing what's going on and placing your life in front of you Mm. what is and there's something very powerful about these creative tasks like you know we we often categorize people as creatives and you know i I personally don't necessarily believe that's the case i believe everyone has innate creativity in in you you particularly are an exceptionally creative person do you think that has both positives and negatives oh massively it's it's huge it's a it's a (laughs) in some ways it's a it's a it's a burden um it's, it's great though i wouldn't change it for the world it's my, my brain works in overdrive, which is the thing I'm trying to uh, not fight against now because I was originally trying to fight against, but I think that's the reason I'm tired all the time or mm-hmm. could sleep a lot more um, because my brain's constantly working on things and you know, trying to find solutions out of, out of, um, for things in, in general. Um, it's never at rest. So mm-hmm. uh, things like you know, uh, meditation, yoga, exercise, et cetera, that, that really helps it but I, I wouldn't change it for the world mm. i think it's a wonderful my my, my mind matthew is, is is a weird and wonderful landscape and <laughs> you know, and also at the same time now I'm, I'm beginning to harness it to help other people as well and also to further now my professional career mm-hmm. um through through using it and uh it's making me extremely happy so yeah. I, I suppose i suppose so- in yeah. so i suppose in that there's a form of acceptance it's not like i'm fighting against this this alter ego and i know you like your comments it's not it's not you know it's not the anti reese that you are fighting against it is yeah. it is you're accepting who you are and saying look i am who i am you know from my perspective there are extreme there's extreme highs in productivity but that does come with lows as well but actually how can i how can i work and and and, and put together a life that i fundamentally feel positive and happy in? i I, th- I think so it is no human is the same um we all have our quirks it is a lot of it it was you know about acceptance as you as you just said of, of of who you are what you are um i suppose then playing to those strengths uh the the, the most company you know, we were, were extremely, uh, they, what really attracted me to them was their culture it was superb, especially around mental health. Mm. Um, and that, you know, and, and, and accepting who you're um, having that just out in the open. I, I did a talk for them. It was quite, quite interesting. I, obviously I don't mind talking about mental health all day, you know, um, you put me on a stage. I'm quite happy talking about my past, but a lot of people, were, um, yeah, a lot of people, People were crying because I did a uh, a talk to my 
uh, fellow colleagues and it was it was weird but um because yeah they didn't appreciate what I was going through because you know, people meet me or whatever and they think oh he's a, he's a nice friendly yeah. happy chap you know so uh, that's I'm sure everyone has everyone experiences that but anyway after that there was that period of acceptance also not not just externally but you know within myself this is who I am um, and and then it you know, leads me down to you know look at again the psychology of time and uh, so you know when to do things when I can't do things when yeah. you know certain certain days you say I'm super productive like yesterday's a perfect example so yesterday I was, was at it for you know 12 14 hours today <laughs> so you're a bit lethargic um so it's 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 this is a case of balancing things out and mm. knowing the beast and that's only going to happen through time through experimentation through trying things uh and patience as well it's, and that's mm. probably the worst thing is patience so but i assume in your most productive maybe you're not very patient no um no i think that's very yeah it is just trying to accept that things take time and yeah. that's um and now i'm very fortunate i know in the last you know couple of months i'm now beginning to focus more on the process rather than the outcome that's been kind of my uh, uh my mantra at the moment yeah. especially with uh, the current state we're in at the moment mm. in in this lockdown there you it's very very difficult to get any outcomes when the future is so uncertain yeah. um so don't focus on that just trust in the process trust in 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 what you um uh, what can you can do what is in your control and then uh then then just keep working at it it's just it's just simple as that there's no i don't think there's a, a magic formula as such you know that's going to fix you in in a couple of hours that's mm. that's the thing it's just it is constant work it's con it's it, it is difficult i don't <laughs> i'm not going to pre pretend anyone who's going on no i suppose a journey from uh, mental health but you, uh, you could you could even go for, to self-improvement as well if you wanted to you know extend it um for people that don't experience uh, mental health issues it just takes time uh, it's patience practice mm. and i don't think i'll ever stop until i i eventually die hopefully at the grand old age of whenever we decide and that'd be a celebration of course it would be, wow, <laughs> that'd be wonderful, wouldn't it? Um, but but i think like if, if there's something like you wrote a song once called Twenty Seven Thousand days yes and i assume that anyone listening who's ever heard no one has ever heard of this song because i can we, we can safely say that we weren't the most followed band in the world however i can certainly say that the way that you approach creatively writing songs that was a good creative outlet for you poetry songs but this particular one about twenty seven thousand days i always stuck with me because twenty seven thousand days is how many years in your life is it 75 is the average it's just the average yeah i think something along that but yeah it's the average amount of human lives so yeah. or and, the best if you, and if you take those twenty seven thousand and you think actually the first five thousand you barely remember the last mm -hmm. five thousand you know maybe aren't too positive either you actually really do have a finite number of days in your life and i found putting that into context it made me really think that hold on i've got every single day i've got to you know i you know i, I you know I, i've got a limited amount of time to feel positive and happy like yeah I was. yeah i think it's i think yeah i think that there is that i think it also does uh in some cases spur anxiety because it's just yeah, kind of like true it's kind of like uh, you're gonna die one day um and that's you know something i've thought about as well and, mm. and see experiencing it on you know one point in daily basis but yes i think it is yeah uh, the whole yeah the whole attitude like life is too short you know etc um it is but then it just takes time for anyone to do it you can only tell someone how to do things but to uh, they have to experience it themselves and go away and think about it themselves mm. and yeah interpret it in a way that they understand yeah because my experience now you know I, i'm i'm happy to share stuff to other people and and uh, may, maybe in in a, a, a weird way that hopefully there's one or two things i mean may take away that they found positive about this experience mm. of me talking to you 
but inevitably everyone's different and and that's ultimately it and they're going to find their own ways weird and wonderful to cope um and not uh, to cope to thrive i think you know yeah. i think that's it that's sometimes word, that. at the start is coping and then as soon as you work hard at it then it's actually turn you turn into a, a strength then i believe so um, yeah and, and we talk about this kind of you know we talk about this kind of people being in a like a disempowered state when they're lacking confidence they're feeling low but actually like you said what you're talking about thriving that thrive is that transition from some fit someone that's feeling disempowered to someone who's suddenly got that self-confidence back like i you know i'm feeling good i'm feeling positive i can conquer the world and those feelings aren't out of reach for anyone it's not something you can buy but it's something that you need to w understand what makes you tick to be able to deliver that strong foundation of confidence to yourself, right? I, I, I completely, yeah. It's just spending time with yourself and, uh, and investing in yourself. I think that's really important. I know, uh, you know, I talk about our relationship because, uh, mm. you know, we went, we, we took a little trip, didn't we, to uh, Morocco, um, which was, you know, it was a little, I suppose it's like a spiritual escape, etc. But that that um as 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 when when we were there was uh was fascinating and and it, I know that's an example that was kind of a bit prompt you, but it, I came back after that after that trip. It was just us for spoiler alert for everyone who's listening, it was just tra us tripping around the trips around the desert. Yeah. Um just uh uh in Under the, cold, the stars. <laughs> coldest warmest place on planet Earth. but um it was just uh yeah but afterwards came out of it. and it is is it is about putting yourself out there experiencing things investing in in yourself um but but i think as well as going back to that trip like there was a particular moment um not necessarily in the desert we split the trip between going into the sahara and then up the atlas mountains and i remember very distinctly that at the very top of that of that mountain you know and we we were we were fortunate you know enough to have a guy to kind of take us up there so we basically didn't get lost um but at the top of the mountain i remember you turning to me and saying i'm leaving all my negativity up here yeah I, I i think <laughs> i think that was a grand kind of yeah grand kind of gesture which you know i think that was more of a, a, a i look back at it now and i think that was a more of si signal of intent yeah and also at the same time that was me that was me trying to it was being a bit naive because uh <laughs> this china the uh, i don't think anyone gets rid of their negativity just by announcing it like that but it, it, i think as, as a waypoint in in terms of trying to trying to improve myself and work with myself but yes i think that was a it was good and it's and, it, and, it, and also it, as they say the first thing to uh, stop your problem is to first announce it out loud yeah um, and that that was kind of it and um yeah but and but i think as well it's it, it, for me watching it it might it might have been considered naive for you but for me it was a, it was a powerful visualization because it's kind of like okay actually yeah fine you we can't leave all our negativity behind of course but there are certain certain things certain events certain certain situations in your life which which you can put to rest and that acceptance of forgiveness and leaving it up the, up the top of the mountain for me it was very powerful it's because no i've 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 left it there it's in my past i'm forgiving this i'm accepting this i'm turning around and i'm walking down that mountain and any new situation which might be negative yeah that can come my way but i feel a little bit more in control to be able to embrace that to understand that and to actually and to actually cope with it yeah I, I think so i think uh i think you're right i think that it yes i think it, it was a culmination of um yeah combination of things leading up to that point that allowed me to let go and it is anyone can change and i i, I don't anyone is it's never too late um i think the brain is a wonderful wonderful organ that is incredibly pliable and and I, I really think you know that yeah it's it's never it's start you know start today start now 
Mm. Start now, and then you thank yourself later. And, and the other thing, I suppose, leaving as you know, leaving leaving things up the mountain is that there's no way I'm going up that mountain again. <laughs> so, so I left it at the top there because the trip up there was is quite quite interesting. So, um, and very steep and yeah, treacherous. So, uh, even if I wanted to go back and claim it, I, I've left it on the mountain. Now. I can't get there. You haven't got a guide <laughs> anymore. <laughs> I can't get there anymore. I'm too old for that, Matthew. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know, it's it's um, yeah. I think I think that's it. I think you know these grand gestures are great, and and they have happened throughout the you know things like um, uh, uh, putting some things on blade to rest, like burning them, etc. Uh, calling people up uh, in my past that uh, I've kind of you know so to either ask me for forgiveness of uh, you know in some ways like that mm. they, they they're useful if you need to do that uh, but um it's other than that it's i think it's um yeah, it's, it's up to the individual how, how they want to do it. the 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 key thing is not these grand gestures they're wonderful and they're great because they stick in your mind like you know for, for me we talk about it now from years years to go years to come and we will probably talk about the rest of our mortal lives and probably after that depending on um but there's the there's there'll always be that it's no i won't talk about you know today well i'll talk about today this interview but i won't talk about what happened last tuesday mm. and then my on my journey to uh, to 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 help myself mentally by you know um changing my habits etc or doing it oh yeah i did an extra minute of meditation or whatever it might or managed to stave off um some of those thoughts for an extra 30 seconds i'm not i'm not going to be reporting that um and that, that's where most of the most of the work is done and yeah, it's true. great to, it's great to celebrate i think that's kind of what we were doing on that mountain mm. or you know whatever it might be in you know, several of our trips that we've had is that we celebrate it we celebrate landmarks and, and they're very important because they stick in your brain uh, um the the real work kind of happens on a on a daily basis i guess mm. and, it's and it's very hard important. and it's hard and, and often it's boring oh of course it is yeah it's dreadful it's it's like anything you know it's just it's it's really poor difficult and there's no reward there's no instant gratification mm. um it's just a culmination it's like anything like uh training yourself for any kind of sporting event that's another uh, you know it's, it's, it's the same thing it's you know i say sport but it could be any any uh discipline that you really want to be good at um it's 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 about you know it's you should treat it with that same level of um same level of kind of uh uh dedication mm. and as well sac sacrifice as well i may add mm. <laughs> you know i know you're a you're a firm believer matthew in going to bed at a certain period in time we have a joke amongst our friends that you know are we should we go down the pub now matthew it's it's 8, 8 p.m oh we can't because you've got to be in bed for absolutely uh, early to bed early to rise uh and, and that's fine you know and but that it you works found for me <laughs> works for you but you know that's what makes you and, and you know and, and i i do know sometimes you do stay up late which is wonderful for the rest yeah. of our friendship group but at the same time it's kind of like uh you know that's that's the not the sacrifice the sacrifice you're you're willing you know have to make in order to make yourself function as a human being and and also you you've um come kind of drawn which is great drawn the line in the sand and say listen this is this is me it's i need really need to do this in order to function and we accept that and we love you for being uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's, there's a certain there's a certain character trait of stubbornness which which uh which is which is positive for you as a person it can be frustrating for your friend but luckily we have such a supportive and kind friendship group um, oh we, we do we do it's um but that, that's that's the thing though it is yeah and that's another point as well it's how it's surrounding yourself with some amazing people that are um that are supportive of what you do and but also it's challenge true. right oh yeah oh we, yeah we challenge it we make your life difficult and you i know everyone, you make my life difficult as well <laughs> but um but it's all done in a, in a, in a great way and uh, yeah so i think it's it's um 
yeah, it's, it's, it's fascinating. It's, it's, it's such a broad topic. We could talk about this for hours, yeah. to be honest. Well, just, just it really interesting because, like, from your, you know, from, you know, one of the big themes of your, you know, in terms of your life, in terms of what you, what you love doing has always been music. I've always known you have the most encyclopedic knowledge of, of, of music, you know, of particularly uh, rock, indie, the genres that I've always, I've always enjoyed as well. Um, like to, to, to tell us a bit more about that kind of relationship with Munich, because I know obviously people listen to music for different reasons, but for me, I've always considered that there, there's a very personal relationship with that and how you express yourself, not just listen to it, uh, but also how you perform and how you play, because you you play bass, guitar, sing in, a, in 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 many bands. Singing is a very broad term there. It is. I just, just to say that I thought I'd throw it out there. Who has, has the mispleasure of of listening to any of the back catalogue? Um, now I, I think it's it's it's, it's uh, for, for music in particular. Um, uh, for me, and especially when we were in university and we were. Uh, in a band in a basement just it's a way to express yourself at that particular point you know and now it's quite easy I'm 35 now I say quite easy but it's years of working at it and I can just say yeah this is this is it this is who I am um this is what I don't like this is what I like and you know this is uh and now we, we we're gonna not like it or lump it but you know we're gonna have to work our way around you know to try and try and make this work, uh, whatever, wherever that might be, work, etc. relationships and things like that. Um, but it's, but back in the day, you know, when I was a, a naive, um, not as confident 20 or something, you know, who, that was my platform to kind of say, this is it, this is who I am. This mm -hmm. is why I believe in, these are my feelings. Um, do, you, do you think you expressed your feelings through what you wrote and how you played? Definitely, yeah, and I think that's extremely, extremely important to you know, to anyone to have that outlet, and and and, and I you know, I think it's that's what's well, the wonderful thing about you music is universal, mm. um, and it brings people together, and yeah, so I th I think and also just performing on stage is you do lay yourself bare, you know, you just do say right, this is who I am, these are my words. This is how I'm feeling, and not necessarily in words and stuff, but I know the way you hit your drums, you know, is, you know, that's the way you're expressing yourself. And, and I know when when we were doing um, more emotional songs, you know, when we're doing the slower songs, you're there just, you know, hitting that oh, or, or ride a little bit softer. But then when when the heavy ones come on, when, you know, when, when the crowd requesting 27,000 days, you know, they're chanting our name or whatever the two, it might be. The, the two people watching well and, and and the dog don't forget right <laughs> <laughs> but 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 the, but the thing is it's true and, and and it's 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 interesting like because you know both of both of us having a similar experience like i remember like when you're on stage performing it doesn't matter if you're in a band or if you're in a play reciting acting whatever like i remember my mum you know came to one of one of our gigs and says matt we're not here to judge you because for me life to that point had been about you know how was i perceived what am i judged at but actually if you if you if you're accepting that people are often people are there to support you not judge you, you realize that actually there's some dysfunctional stuff going on in your head so actually that experience of music and being in a band can actually have a, it's a really interesting feedback between understanding a bit more about yourself i i think so i think it's you can see like there's a there's a theme running through our conversation here that we, we're going back to which is great which is putting yourself out there, um, experiencing it, testing it against what you believe in, and then and then coming back to a, a the conclusion and different conclusion. That's what all self improvement's about. It's about making mistakes. It's about making some dreadful music. It's about making some really good music. It's about wearing some, you know. It's it's about. It's about wearing eyeliner. Let's let's just cut to the eyeliner. chase. It's about straightening your hair. It's about dyeing it blonde. It's, it's about, about black nail varnish. Black, black nail varnish. It's about the police coming round, you know, to break up your your concerts. It's about making these s silly mistakes and uh, have fun whilst you're doing it. And then, obviously, the important bit is then learning from them yeah. and accepting it as as part of it. And that's, I guess, that's just just life in a nutshell. Uh, uh, it is. Good. 
uh, but also like, when you because obviously you, you 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 write songs and now and, and and you're currently in a band now writing songs for them like when when you hear other songs that have been written let's say famous ones so you know i know you're a big fan of you know of uh, for example nirvana like when you hear kurt cobain communicating to you through through those lyrics you know when you're listening to the beatles and i like beatles you're a massive fan as well do, do you get a sense of how they're feeling does that give you a you know does it does it does it enable you to understand maybe from a, people from a different perspective so in what i'm trying to say is that it's not just conversations but music can actually you know carry some meaning to it for people yeah i think so and i think um I think music is as, as i say is a universal language isn't it i think a lot of people it breaks down barriers i think and the messages stay with you because simply because they're supposed to, to hook in your brain isn't it you can uh everyone can recite their favorite chorus from uh their favorite song or whatever it might be over and over and it's almost like a mantra so um do, do you have a it, what's the most powerful song that's moved you the most in the next five seconds if you can pinpoint it <laughs> i don't um i honestly couldn't and i know this whole thing is it it or i know this is sounding trite but it's all, all music moves you in different ways doesn't it okay so so so, 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 so tell us about a song that has moved you uh, well it could be anything so like uh let's um uh it, it's just it, it harks you back to a time where you would either listen with your mates or a period in your life isn't it it's um um so oh, uh there's you know um uh i always associate i don't know why but i always always <laughs> i was always associate some of the, the misfits the punk stuff with you because of a fun story that <laughs> talked about with you and your wife and the fat you know it's, it's just it has nothing to do with the lyrics as such but you know it, there's some really powerful music that you do kind of sit like um like uh, for, uh, laura bat for lashes that's that's an incredible song that uh, you just you can hear the lyrics and uh, uh oasis have written some amazing stuff you know it's i don't know it's yeah it's, music is magical i guess but yeah so and it's and, it, and it's some is it something that's helped you cope yeah definitely i think it's a, it's a voice that you know you uh you can always listen to in your darkest hour and then you know i um, and then also then i find i find I, I love listening to music i think it's great but i, I find me, me writing music and writing lyrics a lot more uh uh enjoyable and and a lot more therapeutic in some sense but you know it's uh it's it's just obviously music's on in the background or whatever it is so. do, you, do, you, do you find it kind of similar to like you know because you know we're, we're often talking about you know the benefits of journaling and writing do you find that writing that really really does help so so it's not necessarily your journey in terms of how you're feeling but you're there's that creative outlet and putting your feelings on a page which is quite therapeutic yeah i think so i i um and i'm a strong advocate for journaling um i do it regularly um and i am going to release the lockdown diaries uh, at some point you know in the future when uh, when you know when people want to have a read of it probably never um and it's yeah I, I i think that's really important i think um because of the way the human brain works um the human brain is made for processing not storing and uh massive amount of information i think i think we, we so i think by writing things down not only does it it, it gets it's almost like a, a brain dump it clears your brain mm. cleans, clears your storage but then at the same time then you forget about things so you can go back and and having that kind of um it's not 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 comparison but just where, where you were thinking also shows improvement and um shows you different ways of thinking and i think that's really powerful as well um and it's interesting how your 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 memories can be distorted because you know like, like, you know your, your memories are called up at a particular moment in time like it can only you can only call up your memories now in the present they may have some distortions based on how you're feeling whereas if you go back and read how you were feeling at the time and how if you articulate it clearly it is amazing you read back and kind of go wow i don't remember feeling maybe as low as this um and it gives it some maybe some broader context uh it, it does it's it's like anything isn't it it's 
anything worth doing or you know for a high point let's pick high point for instance like uh well let's say our let's say our degrees yeah they you know they, they were a pretty uh, pretty big achievement four years of hard graph working in smelly labs obviously not not yourself because you you were didn't like to get near any smelly solvents being a physical chemist but um you know, you look back and I say, yeah, that was a great achievement. I had a wonderful time, you know, learned lots and it was great. Don't remember that you know, completely forget about some of the, the horrible times, you know, the, um, that we, that we had to go through the late hours. We had to pull and in order to get stuff done, the early mornings, the other uh, trials, you know, that were happening on take not on the course as well as personal issues that, that were affecting it at that time. Um, yeah, I, I think it's, yeah, I think it's, that's, that's the thing about journaling. I think it's really useful to understand the process and also it then makes you appreciate the process more. I think that's probably the key thing. It makes you realize that it, you know, celebrate the highs. They really, you should. And, and I, I think celebrating success is so, so important where it's due, but also appreciate the process. And, and then that, that kind of links back to what we were talking earlier, where it's, it is about, these small, small percentage, um, the book for Atomic Habits, it was, it's fantastic. If anyone have a read of that, that that's, that's, that's great. We just talked about small changes and those small changes mount up to it. So I guess that's what journaling does. It, it's about, you know, appreciation of the process and um, documenting it as well, which, you know. And do you find, so now, now, taking those kind of those kind of those new habits you're forming you say recognizing through journaling um building that kind of put you know those positive little little simple accessible things that you do every day you might be eating well you're doing exercise but at the same time now so your your kind of work is shifting a lot more into more social activism and you're doing a lot of work using your art but also um you know using your, your activism to celebrate the history of, of 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 some of the more rebellious elements of south wales and um, you know but perhaps to, to talk to us about that because it seems like from my perspective as you know one of my closest friends that you found a channel where though where your feet where you can really express your 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 like you said your mania sometimes but also those feelings and those those frustrations even that anger sometimes you can you can you, you can push it through that channel yeah, I think it's, I just found a, a, a local group of like-minded people, to be mm -hmm. honest with you. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's it. It's just a community. And my word is, you know, they, they wouldn't mind me saying that. It's an incredible misfit community of, of amazing people. You know, you have um, you have the spec, the complete spectrum from, you know, doctors uh, in education, et cetera, to, you know, people, uh, um, you know, uh, people that, you know, coffee shop workers, um, people that work in you know, the arts, you know, uh, things like that. And I, I just guess it's just, it's about, I think that can, that is, is part of giving back to the, the communities, ex expressing, um, uh, expressing thanks and being grateful for things and giving your volunteering, I guess that comes into it. Um, giving your time for a cause greater than yourself. Yeah. Um, and that's that's kind of where it is, and that, and it's just about yeah, util and, and it's great if you're utilizing the skills that you enjoy whilst doing that, mm. then that's that's ideal. And then it's it, it then for me then that kind of uh, plays the the social aspects which are really important mm. to have a leading a healthy life, you know. So. And that's and that's always kind of you know even in even in one of your even in one of your. Um, uh, some of your work beforehand you know maybe you're working in community sport you know, particularly tennis like there was an you know whilst there's lots of routes when you're when you're kind of kind of you're, you're working in tennis you might be coaching whatever yeah, you were coaching tennis but there was a natural affinity to to, to 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 move towards wheelchair tennis as well and that was that was something that you made a very natural move towards but absolutely thrived i remember talking to you about it and that's what really made you alive about your so there's something about about that for you that makes you thrive in terms of you know you know supporting people to thrive in a certain way i think so i think it's just natural i think humans i'd like to think maybe naive you know humans um 
want to do good. Uh, everyone wants to do good. It's just finding the right channel to order to, order to do it. And for wheelchair tennis, I, you know, uh, it got me up. It got me up at the house. Um, I was training a particular athlete. Uh, it was brilliant. His class, the, the times spent. I, I, I'm not a morning person, as as you well know, um, as everyone well knows who knows me. Um, but it got me out of bed at eight a.m. Uh, two, three times a week, mm. four times a week, not more than eight eight a.m. I had to be at the courts at eight a.m. So, yeah, earlier than that. Um, and um, yeah, so it, it and it is just giving back and and um, and again, it's just new experiences, trying new things experiencing new things meeting new people from 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 walks of life that i've never have have, have met before and, and uh that, that particular athlete now is one of my best mates and uh it's, it's fantastic you know and and and, and that relationship uh, got with him i you know and swap for the world he's, he's, he's an absolute legend and uh, he's enriched my life and hopefully i've enriched his mm. and it's yeah it's just about going out there and, and doing things and uh, that can be quite tricky for people who are uh, um experiencing mental mental difficulties mental health difficulties mm. um to to get out there um but yeah uh, but you know once you can do it just get yourself out there and, mm. it's, and, it's but, but, but also like you said like you know un un understanding yourself and being kind to yourself is really important because you've got to acknowledge when actually t today might not be a day where i can i can go out there and conquer the world sometimes perhaps today all i can do is make my breakfast and go and have what may be perceived as a pretty normal non-achieving day but you know what that's fine completely i still get those days i had had one last week or a couple last week um and uh when i was when i was um uh leaving leaving my job it, i just think it, i don't know what, what it was sometimes they just happen sometimes when i i'm still trying to work out exactly they happen less frequently because i'm learning but yeah it's but on those particular days there um it's just about setting your expectations lower a lot lower than they should be knowing that it's only for a certain period of time it's not going to uh be forever and it's not about beating yourself up around it as well and and i would also say i think this is um a very good point my one of my creative uh uh colleagues and, and partner josh cranton said he's got this quote where your mental health isn't your fault but it's your responsibility and i think that's really powerful as well so for instance on those days i'm, I'm sat right next to my fridge which is right next to me during you know, my kitchen so it's just by there it's uh it's got frozen meals in it that i pre-prepared um so that when I do have down days, etc., and I don't feel like making okay, uh, yeah. uh, food, because what, what what do you do when you when when you when you're feeling lethargic and down and, and just well, borderline paralysed? Sometimes you're just going to eat junk food, aren't you? You're going to eat prepackaged food, and then what does that do? It worsens your mental health, etc. It's, it's not going to help you. So you know you, you prepare for these days that they are going to happen, um, and you put things in place. Then that will help you get out of it as soon as as soon as physically possible but no sooner so uh yeah and I, I, one of the big things as well i mean that's, a, that's that's fascinating in terms of in terms of that preparation for those dark times actually it's almost like having a care pack ready and making sure that you're always going to be okay but i remember you were saying that at one stage you may be drinking much more than they, perhaps you wanted to but now you don't drink yeah it was a, it's, uh, and then that was just a, a a choice and it's something I experimented with you know i you you know as, as well as i do how much i love beer i really love beer i still love beer but i haven't drank any i haven't drank any beer for uh, since november so what are, what are we now uh, yeah over eight months or whatever it is it's not because i have an addiction to it or anything like that it's and, and i i uh, i love it it's annoying i'm salivating just thinking about it but at the same time it's kind of uh, yeah it just it's got it these are the it's these sad the sacrifices i have to make in order to uh to, to get the other things i want out of life yeah and that's it's just one of those things you know it's 
it's, and that, it's, and, and that for you and that for you is a big sacrifice not necessarily because you know like you said you're 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 addicted to beer but it's something you really like and love and actually you know and i've been with you you know in the last you know before lockdown last few months and even if it's just a one can of of of, of nice craft beer that you love you're very strict you're like uh, 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 absolutely not that's not going to help me in two days time no it's it's not and it's it's being kind to your future self it's that's that's <laughs> it's really difficult that is the hardest thing for to it's just being kind to your future self and when you're there in that moment where you're looking at that well for instance in this case beer can you going oh i could have that now. instant gratification but i'm going to wake up feeling not great tomorrow morning or you know in my case I, days it, it find out you know it, it literally lasts days uh, or makes me more vulnerable to feel I, I haven't quite worked it out but uh so it's i just simply got rid of it it's quite uh, but that that that's that's about it and i think you know being kind to your future self in, is really important um in your life in terms of everything in terms of exercise etc um exercise health even even money etc putting uh, i know you and I are big advocates of, of saving, etc., um, and that, that that takes away some anxiety because yeah. when you do go through tough times, you know, uh, financial times, then you know you've got something that you can rely on. So. And to be honest, I think you've summed up your whole conversation really, really nicely with that with that that final phrase, like "be kind to your future self." We always talk about being kind to ourselves, but actually, being kind to your future self is, it, to me, much more powerful. Uh, it, you know what what you've shown throughout this conversation is that you've had some struggles and at times some very serious struggles um so things that 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 have that have harmed you both mentally and physically um and you know brought some insight in for for, for those those who love love you around you to how you are feeling and how you are behaving and acting and how you want to change um for the positive and your those that what's running through is those themes of experimentation relentlessly and that and it's painful it's not easy but you're ending up with with an, a better understanding for yourself what you like what you don't um in preparation for those those dark days it, it, you do have to i, do, I think I've, yeah i think yeah you've summed it up i don't need to say any more there i think yeah, Matthew, but yeah it, that's what it's all about i think it's small steps in order to help yourself out and uh, just be kind to yourself be kind to your future self yeah well i think that that perfectly summarizes reese thank you so much for a fascinating fascinating and insightful conversation that's okay matthew it's been superb and and it's thank you very much for the therapy session i thoroughly enjoyed it <laughs> wait Start the day so well, i you. honestly we, we 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 much appreciate it and thank you to everyone listening um you subscribe to us on uh, on most major pl pl podcast platforms youtube spotify apple Podcasts. you search for sidekick community or psychic stories and we'll pop up thank you so much for listening